Hello together. My name is Herbert Rodlinger. As introduced, I'm Managing Director and the CTO from NDC Garbe uh, Data Center Europe. NDC Garbe is a real estate developer um, based in Germany, focused on data center developments. Um, quick intro on to our services. Uh, on the one side, we are offering standard real estate services with land acquisition, zoning, permitting and financing, but uh, we also offer full data center service from the design to the construction and delivery, testing and commissioning, and last but not least, uh, some special services. So we're offering sales and leaseback, but also microgrids, um, which might be more and more important in the future, especially in areas where there's not sufficient power in the grid available. Our topic, design and build projects from developer perspective. So what's important for the developers by delivering design and build projects and is actually what we are doing. Um, on the one side, we have challenges that uh, the projects get delivered on time, especially in the data center domain, one of the most important, given the fact that there is so much uh, demand and growth in the market since years now. On the other side, customer expectations, um, not only delivering on time, but also in budget and with the quality, etc., cetera, um, as agreed upon in the first place. And last but not least, and it's a very important point, especially from the developer side, is that we have a proper cash, cash and fund management. It means uh, with beginning of the project, we need to make sure that we have a proper understanding what cash and fund is needed to really be able to manage the project through to the end. Issues which um, needs to be addressed to master the challenges we are facing very often is uh, that we have a non-integrated project approach. That means that um, design is not fully aligned with the constructability. Um, we get very late feedback from the construction team if the design intent can be met or not. Um, this is causing delays and change orders, etc. But also prolonged decision making that uh, on the one side that, it, that very late in the project, new stakeholders coming into the play and asking for new requests, which then can maybe met but have an impact on the overall program or on the cost but also that uh, decisions which needs to be done taken with the project teams are not taken on time because they are not they're overlooked or not properly managed and also here last but not least um, unfamiliarity with local regulations and that's something very 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 often we are facing especially given the fact that in the uh, data center industry we are dealing with international customers, which very often takes their qualified or their preferred team. Yeah, sorry for that. So again, I somehow I cannot get access to my screen here to switch it off. Sorry, um, coming back. Unfamiliar with local regulations. Um, very often international companies, they bring their preferred partners with them, which uh, and go with them country by country. And, uh, and these partners very often don't understand local regulations. And if this is not properly managed in the first place, it could really affect the whole project program learning. Maybe when you're already doing some handover and certifications that suddenly you realize that you don't get uh, certification from an expert yeah, to be able to get uh, occupational permit, for example. So by mitigating this risk and master your challenges, you need to look at the mix of three levels and align them with each other. On the first is uh, the project management philosophy. So which philosophy you, you want to apply? Um, 
that we can proper uh, manage the project properly. So, what contract structure does this mean? Yeah, to support and enable this project management uh, philosophy. And a third uh, topic is which uh, tools, digitization tools, in this case, we want to implement to streamline the project management to yeah to optimize it and more and more important also to ensure a proper data collection at the end of the project that you can reuse this project for new projects in a successful manner or even use uh, AI applications to see where to improve. The first project management philosophy, we as um, NDC Garbe, we are following the lean construction methodologies. Lean construction means deliver maximum value with minimum waste. So, first of all, uh, some words about lean construction. Lean construction was developed already end of the 90s by the Lean Construction Institute in the States. And this is somehow an application of the lean management or lean manufacturing approach developed in the 70s by Toyota for their car manufacturing. And uh, nowadays, there will be not one, at least automotive factory in this world, not using these lean methodologies. Lean construction principles, first of all, everything runs about people. So have respect for the people only with um, being respectful with your people and empowering and enabling them and give them some or getting some commitment from them, you will be able to deliver successful projects. And one other important topic is to creating a flow on site, which is typically not really happening. Yeah, so that you're that uh, you're not have uh, peak loads suddenly or you have slowdowns. All this is creating a lot of waste, which can be removed with a proper planning to create flow. And last but not least, um, how can you ensure that you get in, in continuous improvement? That means you get early feedback on from site so that, um, that you can improve uh, moving forward. Um, to create, most important from our point of view is uh, creating a flow on site. And, um, and one possibility by doing this is using tech plan methodologies. I try to explain a little bit what it means. That means you are you're separating your construction in probably uh, preferably equal areas, and you only open area by area as, it, as you go. So you're not opening the full construction site for everybody. So uh, one area you dedicate one um, one gang of a trade to it, and only once they're finished in this area with their um, with their task, with their construction or installation work, then they are entitled to move on to the next area. Um, and the successive, successive trade then can follow into this completed um, area of the predecessor. By, by doing this, you have three advantages. First of all, you can create a flow. That means uh, the same team will run through the site area by area. You don't have to suddenly improve um, the staff or reduce it because you have a slowdown. Secondly, you can immediately identify if you meet your schedule because you defined one area for a specific amount of time. And then you will see when they start and when they finished, if this team can uh, comply your schedule, can deliver this. And, um, and the third topic here is that the successive team will immediately give feedback if the work completed by the predecessors is sufficient for them to add on with their task or with their installation works. So with this, you get immediately feedback. Um, you see if interfaces are working or if there are any other snacks. This can be feedback to the um, predecessor team to consider this in the next area they are entitled to work. For, for implementing this lean construction methodology, it's very important that you also align the contract structure to it. 
best works together if you are adding their integrated project delivery regime. Um, integrated project delivery regime um, goals are that you're creating a collaborative workspace if you want, preferably under single contract to to um, enable a common goal so that everybody of this all parties working towards the same goal and have no um, separate interests uh, to meet the client's expectations. Um, and this very well integrates them with the lean construction methodology. IPD principles, very similar to lean construction, is also based on mutual respect and trust. Only if you are um, having partners who trust and respect each other and don't have a second agenda, for example, or they are they are uh, somewhere worried that somebody. Um, is taking that advantage from them, will they be able to work together in the client's interest? You also need on a very early stage integrate all parties. You can you should not, as very often projects are done, you first do the design, then you tender, and then you then you bring the contract on board. This typically is is um too late for an integrated project delivery. So you bring all parties um, onto the projects early on, which means designer, contractors, um, and also maybe major equipment suppliers. So they align each other and they develop design together and also ensure contractability, ensure schedule, and also ensure time. Important for IPD principle or projects is um, that you are sharing risk and reward. And not only this, that you also define the risk for the contractor properly so that they can really uh, work with this and they don't, they are, they are not, um, how to say that, that they are not forced to only look to manage their own risk, maybe against the interest of the overall project. Preferably, you are integrating all parties under one multi-party agreement. Um, that might be that's that's the perfect environment if you can achieve this. It's not 100% necessary, but uh, if you if you are assigned uh, separate contracts to each contractor, at least to make sure that you are considering uh, risk and reward incentivization rather than penalization into the contract um, that the interfaces between the parties are properly defined. Besides the, the contract arrangement, it's important to have a common platform um, here in, in terms of in by means of a building information model or also co collaboration tool. Uh, which also provides a single point of truth so that everybody works towards the same data and document. And that uh, brings me so to the third level, that means digitization tools. Um, and we are separating between here tools, what we consider as pretty much standard, and tools which already in the market, but uh, more provide an opportunity or a future opportunity. The standard tool, the way I see it, is a 3D model, digital twin, but not only 3D, um, using this 3D model not only for the design and design intent, but also using this model in later for progress tracking and uh, also defining the earned value of the project as it goes. We consider this a standard, but in 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 reality and in our experience, um, um, nowadays maximum 3D digital twins are really used on site, and even there, very often we have the experience that contractors, which are not so tech savvy, um, they still ask them for a 2D drawing uh, to be able to to deliver a project on site or do their construction work on site. Um, Important to really use this 5D model is that your digital twin is uh, has the level of details um, that 
So somebody can really see also all interfaces and all the different objects you are planning to install on site. Only then you can do a pro progress planning and a progress tracking and the end of the day also defining the earned value. All this needs quite some preparatory works. So it uh, might increase the level of effort you have to do for project preparation and project planning, but it will give you then later on a huge benefit um, by executing um, because um, you have extremely transparent overview about what's going on inside. Besides uh, maybe the 3D digital twin, it's also important that your network on site and the technology on site is, is sufficient um, and has the right bandwidth or the right uh, hardware equipment here to, to, um, to enable this way of uh, project management and project tracking. That's also very often an issue we are facing on site. Besides um, standard practices, there are also opportunities. We call it also future opportunities, even if they're already in the market available. Um, the one of them is augmented reality. Augmented reality has a few opportunities. On the one side, um, it, um, it can be used for um, project construction planning. That means uh, you can um, overlay your design on the physical side and uh, you can see and also show to your workers where the different element and object shall be constructed. You can also train people on this on the job to show them what is expected from them and how it should be done. And later on when the construction has been completed, you can also use it to see if the design intent is met or if there are any snacks by overlaying then your design to the physical construction on site. Besides augmented reality, there are also virtual reality, I guess very well known, um, already pretty much used but not so much for, for construction rather than more for demonstrating or in the gaming industry, obviously. Yeah. So um, for construction projects, on the one side, it can be used to demonstrate to the client what the building or the data center will look like once completed. On the other side, you can also use this as a remote collaboration if people cannot be on site to work with them on a design or or maybe also on level of details if there are if there are issues uh, during construction besides these tools it can be used for training that means especially the operational team they can with virtual reality they can really uh, get training on heavy equipment, but not only on this, um, which is maybe even more important, they can really get training for testing or real life risk scenarios without really have to touch them uh, on, for example, on live equipment. Um, one point maybe I forgot on the artificial um, augmented reality is um, uh, that um, you can also you can also use this uh, for SP documentation once uh, the construction is completed you can use your augmented reality lenses or or a drone with a camera yeah, to to really also overlay your design intent with the construction see where the deviations are and then can back back feed this information or this data in your um, digital twin and align it so that uh, as built and as constructed is equal. By 
integrating now all these three elements on the one side, uh, okay, what project management methodology I want to use and integrate this with uh, the proper structure and technology. We are the opinion that this really is uh, the best match for you to really achieve high quality project and also ensure a project delivered on time and within budget. I want to look at the schedule now. Yeah, so 20 minutes. So that's the end of my presentation. Sorry for you and no. the we had from this. So <laughs> I went, no, we, we, didn't, we just saw it we didn't hear it yeah and like I said we've been fairly smooth sailing so far so we, so we're pretty good uh, thank you so much Heather that was excellent um just a couple of quick questions before we, we we head to the next session so where would you say um in in terms of these IPD principles uh kind of is the biggest stumbling block um not to, to, you know, put any way to it, but would it be communication and getting people to actually collaborate and talk with each other? Um, or, or, or are there other parts that, that, we're fall, that we'd be falling down on? I base the most important is um, that you need to create an environment that everybody works towards the same goals. Yeah? Too often contracts, and I, I would rather start with the contract structure. Yeah? Very often contracts are, contracts are designed in a manner so that um, they are protecting the landlord yeah, or us as developer from all risk as much mm -hmm. as possible. Yeah? And this is for each party then somewhere different or the same. That means each party's interest is to mitigate their own risk, mm -hmm. which not necessarily are in the interest of the overall project. Yeah? So this is really what you need to achieve. Uh, but let's be honest, you know, um, each theory is only that good as the people you're working yeah. with. At the end of the day, you need to really select the proper parties, which are also open for this kind of structure. Not each party uh, is open for this, so it has a different company policy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I it's, it's believe that's somewhere where it starts. On the one side, uh, do I have the right partners? And also, do I have the right people then, project managers, mm -hmm. et cetera, supporting this. Yeah. Um, and we did sort of, we've, again, it's one of the things we've touched upon earlier um, in, in an earlier session, but, uh, you know, we do tend to work in silo. So um, what's the best, I mean, you touched on there, what's the best way of, of stopping that from happening? Is it about selecting the right people, having those early meetings to find out how you can work collaboratively? If, if you really go for, a, let's say, an IPD project, as by definition, yeah, you uh, you spend a lot of time at the beginning to really um, qualify the people you're working with. Yeah? Mm -hmm. First, parties and companies, obviously, but not only companies. When you have maybe some companies selected, you really work with the people and have interviews with the people, see if they're open for this. Yeah. Um, I didn't watch uh, the, the presentation before, yeah, but as you said, yeah, we are working in silos. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, the construction industry still has this uh, habit, uh, this attitude in, in that people working in silos. That means it's very difficult to break this up. Yeah. Yeah. And, we, and we've had. Yeah, and it's a of, of people selection, yeah, at the end of the day, yeah. Um, and we've had a couple of, um, you know, again, it's been something we, we talk a lot about, um, but we've had a very tumultuous uh, few years we've had a pandemic, we've had a supply chain crisis, we've had all these things going on. So is this going to help us, whatever the future may hold? And it is, you know, there are so many things changing in the data centre sector at the moment um, in terms of workloads and, and sustainability. Is this going to help us sort of mitigate unforeseen um, things like supply chain uh, challenges and, you know, skills crises? No, you're good. There are always uh, um, risk you might not foresee at the first place. Yeah, mm -hmm. you, you might maybe consider them if you have the experience. You know, I guess five years ago, ago nobody would have considered something like uh, no. crisis. Yeah, so it was not not in late, or you maybe have it on your mm -hmm. risk register, but you consider this as as un, yeah, um, unex. Um, what is this very low mm -hmm. um, probability? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah. So, so, but on the other side, now with the experience we have, yeah, you definitely should consider them as a possible risk and also mitigation. Yeah, what mm -hmm. you can do, or at least you should be prepared. Yeah. So. Yeah. 
a case of uh, expect the unexpected because as we've seen over the last few years anything can happen yeah, um, yeah. thank you so much for joining us today that was excellent um we, we really enjoyed having you and have a, a great rest of your day thank you Bye-bye. thank you very much bye-bye